Today we're going to be looking at The Context of Photograph 51 by Anna Ziegler and My Brilliant Career by Miles Franklin and summarize and analyze the plot of each text. Let's go. We'll start by looking at the plot summary of Photograph 51 and My Brilliant Career, just to give us a little refresher on what each text is about. My Brilliant Career is an Australian literary classic by Stella Miles Franklin, which is set in rural New South Wales in the late 19th century. The story is presented in an autobiographical format and depicts the life and travels of Sybilla Melvin and her family. The novel is written in a fairly free-flowing format, which Sibylla unapologetically explains is a result of her life being unconstructed and lacking a plot. At times, you may be frustrated with Sibylla's pessimism and cynicism. At other times, you may hold back tears as you reflect on the adverse circumstances she faces as she pursues her goals and strives to find purpose in her life. The novel commences with Sibylla and her family living in Brogagong. Sibylla is content with her life here, with the freedom to roam around and ride horses as she pleases. However, as the first chapter comes to a close, we're told that Sibylla's father, Dick Melvin, intends to sell his stations and move his family to Possum Gully. He hopes that Possum Gully will present him with greater financial opportunities through trading farm animals. Sibylla is frustrated by the move and perceives her family's new home as boring and monotonous. At the same time, life is hard for her mother, who becomes increasingly critical of Sibylla who seems to be developing into a rebellious child. Dick inflicts a great deal of pain upon his family, as he spends too much time in town, loses money with every sale, and becomes an alcoholic. The drought certainly doesn't simplify matters, with the scorching heat taking a toll on Sibylla, her family, and their animals. Eventually, we learn that Sibylla's grandmother has decided to live with her in Kattegat. Sibylla enthusiastically agrees and celebrates the opportunity to experience life in a different location away from the difficulties of Possum Gully. Whilst in Kattegat, she lives with Grandma Bossa, Aunt Helen, and Uncle JJ. During her time there, several men approach Sibylla with an interest of marrying her. The first is Everell Gray, a wealthy lawyer from Sydney with a keen interest in the performing arts. She is denied the opportunity to travel with him and he neglects her upon hearing this news. Frank Horden, a farmhand to the family, is attracted to Sibylla, but she sharply rejects him due to his unsophisticated demeanor. Finally, she meets Harold Beecham of Five Bob Downs. They enjoy spending time together and he brings out Sibylla's playful side. They eventually become engaged. However, Sibylla never intends to marry him and only agrees to the engagement on the condition that it is kept as a secret between the two of them. She shares to her audience that she intends to break off the engagement as a means of stirring up and confronting Harold. Eventually, Harold is forced to leave Five Bob Downs due to his financial misfortune resulting in the loss of his property. However, he and Sibylla agree to maintain their engagement and commit to marrying after a few years. Having said that, Sibylla never really has any intention of marrying Harold, for she views marriage as restrictive and unnecessarily controlling her freedom to pursue her own life. Shortly after Harold's departure, Sibylla is confronted with the news that her father's debt to Peter Maswat means that she will be required to travel to Barney's Gap to work as a governess for the Maswat children. It would be an understatement to say that Sibylla is dissatisfied with this new state of affairs. She absolutely hates working for that family. She finds that the house is filthy, the children are disobedient, and she has very minimal personal space. All she wants is to go back and live with Grandma Bossier and Aunt Helen. However, her mother denies her this privilege, for she must repay her father's debt. The experience at Barney's Gap becomes so bad for her that she develops an illness due to the emotional strain that she experiences. Accordingly, Mrs. Swat sends her back home to Possum Gully to be with her family. Sibylla hardly receives a warm welcome from her parents. Her mother continually treats her as ungrateful and her father's drinking has had a significant impact on his demeanor. Her younger sister, Gertie, is sent off to live in Kattegat and Sibylla feels as if Grandma Bossier, Aunt Helen and Uncle JJ have forgotten about her. To make matters worse, she feels as if Harold Beecham, who has been unable to return to Five Bob Downs, is falling in love with Gertie. 
Eventually, Harold returns to Possum Gully. Sibylla is expecting her to ask Dick for permission to marry Gertie. But to her surprise, he actually intends to ask Sibylla if she will marry him, even though she made it clear through her letters that she had no intention of doing so. For fear of hurting him and due to her view of marriage as restrictive, she rejects Harold again and sends him on his way. And that's basically the story. Sibylla concludes with some reflections on her position and purpose in life. She sees her purpose as contemplating the monotonous task that nobody wants to complete, and she's grateful for the opportunity to earn her living through hard labor. Photograph 51 is a play by Anna Ziegler, which tells the story of the discovery of the structure of DNA. The title takes its form in the photograph taken by Raymond Gosling and Rosalind Franklin at King's College in 1952. The play has been constructed by Ziegler with a bit of artistic license, and she herself admits that she has modified timelines, altered facts and events, and recreated characters. If we take a step back and look at the big picture, we have a great representation of events, which makes some bold statements about injustice within the scientific community and society at large. It's important to mention that this play is full of characters who break the fourth war. It is a performance convention in which we usually imagine that there is a war that separates characters from the audience when we watch a television show, movie or play. Ziegler has deliberately constructed this play in a manner where the characters that feature in the play provide commentary of the events to the audience. And this is how we start, with Rosalind directly speaking to the audience alongside Wilkins, Watson, Creek, Casper and Gosling. Rosalind shares that the play will be about powerful scientists accomplishing incredible feats. Shortly after this, our story begins with frequent interruptions from the male scientists who want to bicker with each other and give their own commentary on the events, by the way. Rosalind arrives at King's College in London to work on the field of genetics. However, much to her surprise and dissatisfaction, she is told that she'll be working on uncovering the structure of DNA. She also learns that she'll be working with a doctoral student, Gosling, under the direction of Wilkins. Wilkins and Rosalind clearly don't get along, and they're often fighting about something. Meanwhile, Rosalind is clearly lower in the chain of hierarchy and awkwardly tries to have a say in matters. Now pay attention to this part, because it will be important for the end. Shortly after her arrival at King's College, Rosalind goes to see a production of Shakespeare's comedy, The Winter's Tale. Ziegler doesn't get into the details. Basically, this play features King Leontes and Hermione, his wife. Leontes murders Hermione upon suspecting her of unfaithfulness. In The Winter's Tale, Leontes is able to pray Hermione back to life. So why is this significant to photograph 51? More on that in just a second. Just remember for now that Rosalind can't seem to remember who played Hermione in the London production, while she can recall who played Leontes. We may say that this represents the misogyny that Rosalind has internalized after facing a lifetime of sexism from the world around her. As Rosalind and Gosling work closely on faking photographs of DNA, Gosling urges her to go home and rest on several occasions. She refuses, as she wants to persist in her work. He also pleads with her to be more careful around the beam, but she's reluctant to listen. It's clear that she disregards her health and well-being because she's fixated on the task at hand. We are introduced to two other scientists, Watson and Creek, who are also competing in the race to discover the structure of DNA. Another character, Casper, is introduced around this time. He's a PhD student who is captivated by Rosalind's work and writes to her for assistance with his research. He eventually finishes his PhD and obtains a fellowship at King's College, where he develops a close relationship with Rosalind. Over the course of the play, Wilkins works progressively closer with Watson and Creek, and eventually shares Rosalind's photograph 51 with them. This image, having been captured and developed by Rosalind and Gosling, was crucial in their discovery of the devil helical structure of DNA. Watson and Creek are able to access Rosalind's unpublished paper, which details all of her findings. Rosalind and Casper are having dinner together, and she admits to the audience she has feelings for Casper. However, she doesn't share this with him. During this time, Rosalind has some pain in her stomach, and it is revealed that she has cancer, with two tumours in her ovaries. It is likely that this came about due to her close work with x-rays. She becomes very sick, and eventually dies at the age of 37. 
We are informed that Watson, Creek, and Wilkins all received the Nobel Prize for their work on uncovering the structure of DNA. Meanwhile, Rosalind receives no credit, even though her research was what helped them with their breakthrough. In the final moments of the play, Rosalind and Wilkins talk about the winter's tale. Wilkins shares that he saw her entering the theatre on the day when she saw the play, but he decided not to enter with her. He regrets this, and it's clear that he's lived a life full of regret. Wilson wishes he could bring Rosalind back to life, just as Leontes does with Hermione in Shakespeare's play. However, he regrets that this is not possible and must carry on his life with guilt and regret for the decision he has made and the way he has treated Rosalind. And there you have it. If you found the plot summary, our observations and analysis in this video helpful, then you definitely want to check out our comparative text guide for Photograph 51 and My Brilliant Career. In this text guide, which has been written by a top 5% study scorer in English, you will learn the unique points of comparison through LSG's convergent and divergent strategy, which will help you stand out from the rest of the cohort. You will also get a range of sample a essays with every essay annotated and broken down on how and why these essays achieved a so you can see exactly what to replicate in your own writing. There's also a lot more background and thematic information about the text in there too, so you can be sure that we've covered everything you need to ace your response in Photograph 51 and My Brilliant Career. And if that's not convincing enough, you can even download a free sample of the study guide on our shop page. The link's on the screen for you to check it out. Good luck on your assessment and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!